let's talk about the bass. Uh, this is the first instrument group that I worked with. Um, so first I want to have you guys listen to what this sounds like, just the bass stem. So this is the bass with all the processing. It's already been through the um, mixing process and through the mastering uh, and two bus chain. Uh, the caveat here is that my CPU can't handle screen recording in 1440p um, and all the plugins and all the mastering plugins at the same time. So I've just opened, I just bounced it to a stem. Uh, so I'll just have you listen to it here. So again, this is the base with all the processing already mastered, mixed, etc. So that's what it sounds like. Um, it's pretty, it's very consistent, it's very clear, um, and it's you know pretty thick, got a nice combination of top and bottom end, and the mid range is more distorted than the bottom end. So the chain here was, uh, I have my Ibanez SR505, the stock pickups, which are not great, uh, all the electronics and the controls set at um, zero, set in the middle, equal pickup blend, and I think I used a Dunlop Altex uh, 73 pick, the clear one. I'm not a bassist. I actually don't really know how to play the bass. I'm mainly a guitarist. So I pretty much just made it up as I went along and tried to make sure that it didn't sound too harsh, that my playing was strong and consistent, um, and that I was doing something, you know, relatively interesting on the bass. So I just recorded a straight DI of that into my Roland Quad Capture. And then I did some splitting, some manual. Um, hand volume writing, then I passed it through Waves Bass Rider, and I think I might have passed it through an 1176 plugin just to shave off some of that, um, some of the peaks, and then I passed it back into my Kimber Profiling Amplifier, which is what I use to generate all the uh, bass and guitar tones on this album. And I can actually show you exactly which um, Kemper profile I used. It's one of James Stevenson's uh, Dark Glass B7K profiles. I'm 99% sure, yeah, it was a JS Smooth Tube. I bought one of his paid packs and actually ended up liking his free stuff better. Just, you know, the tones uh, were preferable. So um, uh, this was the uh, profile used for the bass. So again, um, played with the pick, controls at Unity, uh, volume ride into the Kemper through this profile. Once it hit that profile, I sent that back into Reaper. And uh, here's, again, this is without the master bus on, without the mastering of the two bus controls. Um, but here's what that sounds like, um, just raw from the Kemper. So it's nice and sort of smooth in the bottom end, but the top end is incredibly uh, clicky and piercing and harsh and gross. Um, and if any of you have seen uh, Adam Getgood's uh, Creative Live course, you're going to go, oh my god, you're literally copying what he did. And yeah, yeah, I totally am. So uh, <laughs> I'm copying his plugin chain, but basically I pass it through FabFilter Saturn to distort it. And um, here, I'll turn everything off in front of it so you can hear the effect of each individual plugin. So this is the B7K profile through Saturn. <laughs> This makes it sound distorted, but even grosser. <laughs> so the bottom end is uh, clean tape, which is really just sort of filling it out. And then the top end is heavy saturation, which is what's giving it that distorted vibe. And then I'm passing it through recabinet, which I'm just using as an impulse response loader. I have no idea where I got these impulses. I'm pretty sure I got them for free on the Andy Sneep forum. And it looks like I'm using um, probably an Ampeg 8x10. So here's what that sounds like. The part where it says open actually has, um, you can see, I've automated a delay plugin to turn on to fill out the space, so that's why it suddenly turns stereo on you. Um, but this just sort of you know fills out the sound and makes it sound like it's going through a real cab. After that, I did some cutting, and uh, I think I might have automated this boost in places. Virtual tape machine, just to 
squish it down a little bit, round out the sound. Multiband compressor with the sub lows not affected, but reasonably heavy settings and the rest of it. Um, I wanted to squash the low mids and make it extremely consistent. This is the gross garbage zone, so I wanted to um, smash and destroy this so the listener really didn't hear much of it at all, or at least to the extent that you did that it was very controlled. And then you don't want the high end to be too clicky. Oh, but I turned that off too. Well, never mind about that. So it's just the foundational tone and the gross low mids that I've affected here. Pass this through uh, some gentle compression here with an SSL compressor. It's like, you know, one to three decibels of gain reduction. Got a little bit of volume adjustment. Got a noise gate um, just for start stop parts. Limiter, which I limited more than I should have. It does click and um, get gross in a couple places, but it really mixed nicely with the kick drum and the listener can't tell. So I sort of left it like that meter and then as I said I automate this delay plug and this is the Native Instruments replica I think they gave it away free for one of their Christmas plug-in giveaways one year it is fantastic it's by far my favorite plug-in delay which is probably because I mostly use the stock free Reaper stuff other than this uh, so it feels amazing to me um, the user interface is a little messed up it tends to reset the controls for some reason um, so I just have it set to the uh, gross sort of background UI um, but that's what the bass sounds like I pretty much, I'll, I'll admit this numerous times, uh, I copied Nolly's bass tone, uh, but it sounds really good, and I think it worked well with the drums in this album, so that is why I did that.